Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video will be an interesting one because we're doing a trip and we're going up to the Lake District. We haven't planned this journey at all. We'll be taking our EV, which is a standard range Tesla Model 3. It has 263 miles of rated range. So what we're doing today is we're gonna see how to plan our journey, how long the journey should take with the website that we'll be using. Now, the Tesla vehicles do not have any form of waypoint marking. So when you use Google Maps, you're able to put a number of waypoints that will give you an estimation of how long it will take to do your journey. These vehicles will only take you from place A to B. So what we will be doing is we'll be planning our route using a better route planner. And with the better route planner, we'll see whether it really gives us an estimated value of how long the journey will take and how long our range will be. How long our range will be? Yeah, cool. Hey, I like it. Okay, so this is a better route planner. So as I mentioned before, the Tesla Model 3's entertainment system has a great display. This is fantastic. And it's great from going from A to B, but you can't actually plan for multiple routes, especially when you're doing long journeys. It's really important to be able to know where you should supercharge and how long your journey will take you along the different stops, along the different legs. And that's where a better route planner comes in. So this website's really handy for long road trips. So we're starting our journey in Elstree, just north of London, and we're going over to Lador Falls Hotel. Lador Falls Hotel. Yeah. And in Keswick. In, in Keswick. So let's pop in our information. So Lador Falls. And then... Okay, now what you can do is you can press this big blue button and you can start to plan your trip. But sometimes you want to set certain parameters. So for example, in our car, we don't have a full state of charge. We're currently at 115 miles. So the great thing about this website is that you can select the car you have and you can also select your state of charge, your percentage of charging. So 150 miles, I'm gonna call it 40%. So this is our state of charge when we're starting our journey. And then the website will go through and then give us some details about how long the journey should take. So apparently this should take five hours and 32 minutes with two stops, one at Northampton's supercharger and another at Kiel supercharger. They've done an, uh, a breakdown of what your estimated cost should be as well at each supercharger. So for the first journey of 50 miles should cost six pounds. The next supercharging journey should cost nine pounds as well. I do not like this output, however, because when we arrive at the hotel, it says that we should arrive with 10% left. I'm not trying to risk that. So what you can do is you can go over to these, these cogs, these setting icons at each of these stages of the planner. When you press it, it will give you an option to actually state how much your charging should be at the end. So I'm going to make that 95. I'm going to then run the planner again and my time should change. So as you can see here, if we left right now at 12.10, we should be arriving at 7.09 p.m. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a good journey with three stops along the way. So we'll stop at now Northampton, we'll stop at Kiel, and then we'll stop at Penrith as well. So let's see how it goes. So as luck would have it, we got stuck in quite a bit of traffic on the first leg of our journey on the M1 motorway, but that could happen to any car, whether it be an ICE or an EV vehicle. And on the point of range, the journey from L Street to the Northampton Supercharger is only 50 miles, so I wasn't too concerned about the car's charge. Now, when you arrive at Northampton, the Tesla charges are based in the Campanile Hotel car park, so let that be your reference point. The signs will say it's a patron-only car park, but all you have to do is go inside and speak to the hotel staff. Then they'll ask you to enter your car registration details onto the systems. After that, you're good to use the superchargers. So the, the way a better route planner works is that it always tries to get you with enough charge to your next destination. So, I mean, to get to this Northampton supercharger, it wanted us to get here with 15%. To the Kiel supercharger, it wants us to get there with 10%. To Penrith as well, it wants us to get there with 10%. So I guess for anyone using a better route planner, please bear in mind that you may have a bit of rage anxiety just trying to get to your superchargers. It may make sense just to top up a bit more than what it recommends for you. All right, hey guys, so we've made the first leg of our journey. We've completed supercharging now to Northampton. We're going to head to our next supercharging station in Kiel, which will should be about a two hour drive roughly. And from our 60% state of charge, it should leave us with 10%. So I can't believe he's making us do this. Let's see how it goes. We're going to put Kiel supercharger into here. Let's see here, Kiel northbound. I mean, it doesn't actually say which one it is. Let me check out the charging options. Again, this is just arranged by distance. Kiel services northbound, I reckon, will be our stop. The thing is, I do need a supercharger proper. If anyone knows an easier way, let me know. Find Kiel on the map. And are you northbound? You're southbound. What are you, though? Wee. 
All right, 95 miles, ETA one hour, 34 minutes. That's and good. the time is one, oh no, the time is 2 p.m. So we should be getting there for 3.30. All right, let's go. All right now, so we're on the M6 making our way up to Keswick and we're in a town called Cannock. So what I just wanted to show on these long trips, it can get tiring like having your foot on the accelerator, concentrating on the road all the time. So it's really handy to be able to have supportive features like autopilot. So when you're driving right now, you see that there's a visualization of the road ahead of us. What you can do is you can double tap down on the stalk and the car goes into autopilot. Now you should be ready to take over the wheel at any point in time, but it's really handy to know that the car will make turns for you, even on this curve, and maintain your speed. All right, hey guys, we've arrived at the Kiel service station, our second supercharger, and we have arrived at quarter past four. We were meant to get here according to our better route planner. Gosh, wow, 2.51. So we're just about, what, an hour and a half late. Our estimated state of charge upon arrival was meant to be around 10%. Yeah, I guess we've got 40 miles on the clock. So this is going to be quite, um, not a long charge, but we're going to charge you for 30 minutes. Get up to a 72% state of charge and then start our journey again. On the point of charging, I just wanted to show you something. We go to charging. You can actually set the limit of your charge essentially. So work out what 72% is. Go to set limit and then you can just adjust your charging. So it goes from 50% up to 100. So 70, 72% will be around here. And once you're done, you can set your limit and then start your charge. So let's get out and get this on the way. All right, hey guys, we're about to depart from Kiel. Supercharging is finished. I just wanted to point out that the time is now, well, it's almost 10 past five and we've got maybe just below a 75% state of charge. So we're gonna head to our third stop, which will be the supercharger at Penrith. So whilst we had initially planned to stick to the script, we felt we'd rather not face the prospects of arriving at Penrith with only 10% in the tank. So we decided to stay a bit longer to top up. Back to the video. All right, so cool. So we are at 244 miles. We're gonna leave Kiel and head. We're gonna head to Penrith and take around two hours to get there, one hour, 50 minutes. So let's see, the time right now is 5.34. So let's see how we do. By 7.23 p.m. we arrived at the T-Bay Superchargers just south of Penrith. Also, whilst you're supercharging, you might want to check out the cool farm shop at the service centre. It's got a shop and a nice canteen where you can pick up some food for the road. We left the T-Bay Superchargers with about 100% state of charge in the car, just about enough for the last leg of our journey to Keswick in the Lake District. All right, so we had to race here because we had a 9 p.m. reservation at a restaurant here. What's the name of the restaurant? Lakeview. Lake <laughs> at the Lakeview. So yeah, um, didn't get quite get the end, but we literally got here around 10 minutes to nine, and it's just been beautiful the whole way. So um, yeah, that's been the journey. Uh, departing London around midday and <laughs> getting here nine hours later. <laughs> I found a better route planner to be a very handy tool and until Tesla developed their own solution, I would 100% use it again, especially on trips where I need multiple waypoints. So a journey that should have taken us an estimated 7 hours took 8 hours and 42 minutes, which is a delay of 1 hour and 44 minutes. Now the delay was due to two things really. The first was traffic on the first leg of our journey from Elstree to our first Tesla supercharger in Northampton. The second factor was our decision to top up more than necessary before setting off from our second stop keel. The thing is we didn't want to run into the issue of having a low state of charge whilst on the motorway. Whether you drive an internal combustion engine vehicle or an electric vehicle, unexpected traffic can always be an issue. However, range anxiety becomes really apparent in an EV when you're travelling long distances and hoping you arrive in time with the charging station available. I would always recommend charging up just a bit more than what a better route planner recommends, even if it means you'll be slightly behind time. 
Now the journey back to London was interesting as I was expecting to have the same issues with traffic and range anxiety that delayed our journey up to the Lake District. We set off from another town in the Lake District, Grasmere, and arrived in London quite close to the estimated time that the better route plan had detailed, with only a single stop along the way. The total time down to London was 4 hours and 49 minutes. For me, the difference was just being a bit more comfortable with the high state of charge that I had in the car before departing, and also I was just more familiar with the route. So that's the video. I'll leave you with a few clips of our time up at the Lake District. If you found this video helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified of future videos, you can subscribe to the channel. Take care.